The formal rigorous study of geometry began about the year 800 BC with the Greeks. Greek society was one of the first to have an economy that allowed a portion of the population to be free to pursue academics professionally. Some of those ancient mathematicians have names that are still alive today, like Euclid and Pythagoras. The geometry studied in today's high schools is Euclidean geometry, and most of us are familiar with the Pythagorean theorem of right triangles. The Greeks sought the beauty of mathematics in all things. Geometry began as a purely intellectual attempt to apply the science of mathematics to the shapes of the world. They adopted a set of axiomatic rules for their study of geometry. In short, they wanted to allow the math to do most of the work, so they used as few assumptions as possible as a basis for their study. Euclidean geometry builds on a small set of unproven axioms, known as postulates in the modern classroom. The Greeks wanted these assumptions to be as obvious as possible, so they included such basic statements as, through any two points there exists exactly one line. In all, Euclid allowed for 10 such assumed statements and proved 465 theorems based on them. The tools of geometry have remained fairly consistent over the past 3,000 years. The Greeks used a compass, a straight edge, and a marking instrument in sand, as demonstrated here. As paper became widely available, the marking instrument was replaced with ink, and the compass became much more compact. For most students today, the pencil has replaced the ink, but little else had changed until quite recently. As computer technology has become widespread in the last quarter century, it has become increasingly useful for students. Geometry modeling software is readily available. There are programs aimed at students studying planar geometry, such as Geometer's Sketchpad. There are also a number of three-dimensional modeling programs used for CAD or computer-aided design like AutoCAD. Three-dimensional modeling is widely used in professional design work from packaging and modeling to architecture and engineering. Jumping right to work in three dimensions is appealing since students are familiar with games that rely on three-dimensional modeling. These programs require an understanding of the basics of geometry. Before a student can make a model that requires a rhombus as a polygon, he or she must be able to create the rules necessary to make a rhombus. An understanding of Euclidean geometry and construction is the key. We're going to prove the Pythagorean theorem. We'll label the sides of a right triangle, the legs A and B, the hypotenuse will be C. We'll make three copies of the triangle, and we'll arrange them as shown. Next, we'll label the lengths of the sides of the triangles. Notice that a square is formed, with the lengths of the sides being A plus B. Inside of the larger square is a smaller square with sides of length C, which, when added to the four triangles, also give us the area of the large square. We can write an equation for the area of the square two ways, and we will set them equal to each other. The area formula gives us a plus b quantity squared, or we can add up the four triangles together with the square in the center and get 4 times 1 half times a times b plus c squared. If we expand the left side, we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. On the right side, we've got some cancellation that takes place. We have 2 times a times b plus c squared. We then look at the fact we've got 2ab on both sides of this equation. We subtract 2ab from both sides, and almost magically, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, the Pythagorean theorem.